I'm here tonight to just uh, teach whatever Spirit has for us, and, and Spirit has been giving me some stuff today to talk about, and I'm a little bit reticent, actually, because it's a little controversial, but I think it's uh, we're going to be talking tonight about things that we need to talk about as lightworkers and be really clear about as we go forward through this shift in consciousness that we are all experiencing. There's a lot of conversation out there, isn't there, about the shift and ascension and a lot of us really don't even know what that means or if it's real. And, you know, I think it's going to show us what it is as it happens. And it is happening. But um, I just know that as lightworkers and spiritual journeyers and adventurers, we have to stick together and we have to be really clear about what our purpose is here on the planet. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that tonight and how we need to really approach this world, this 3D reality, which seems fixed doesn't it? it? It seems hard to get away from, but really we are in control of this reality and we can make it whatever it is that we want to make it. And we have to be conscious of this and aware of this because a lot of us are living unconsciously. And as a result, we're living in a crazy world. So mommy's going to talk about that tonight. Is that okay? We're going to talk about the crazy world. We're going to talk about the system and we're going to talk about us and how we can change that system. Word? Word. That's what we're going to talk about. But first, um, I just want to announce that both Trisha Carr and I are going to be teaching something called the 2018 Intuitive Intensive starting next month, less than a month now. We've already got almost 50 people signed up. I'm super stoked. It's a 12-week program. It's going to be rad. You've already heard about it ad infinitum. I'm not going to talk about it for, for long. But it's really wonderful, and it's going to involve personal coaching, some channeled information, and a lot of knowledge and content. So if you are at that place in your life where you're ready to take your spirituality and really your gifts and your talents, even if you don't think you have them, we all know you have them. You do have them. They're just dormant or they're unrecognized. And if you're ready to experience that awakening, then I encourage you to check out our program because it's going to be really, It's I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be really wonderful. So to learn all about what we're going to be doing week to week to week, go to thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive. That's thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive. Check it out and register in January. We've got a bit of a discount, so that's awesome. Just want to make sure I mention that. First, though, I wanted to talk to you about um, – our lives <laughs> and what I'm noticing, what I'm perceiving around me. And, you know, I, I think I'm fortunate a little bit because I live an isolated life. As some of you know, I live on five acres in North Texas in the country, the country of Texas. And I can't see my neighbors from anywhere around my house. And it's very quiet and I've got my dogs and my husband. And, and so I'm not really, and I don't have internet very, very good internet. And so I'm on the internet, but I really, I'm not saturated with the internet such as so many of you are. And I think most people are, I really don't have access to that. I just have access to some TV if I wanted to and moderate internet. And so as a result of that, I think I'm pretty shielded from most of what's happening out there in the world via internet. And I'm not necessarily taking energetic hits all the time, which I think a lot of you are. But even so, as isolated as I am, when I pop online, I'm taking those energetic hits. Just the other day, I kid you not, my husband posted two very innocuous posts. One was a video, another one was some meme or something. Like one was about Great Danes just frolicking and having fun. And as a test, I went into the video of the Great Danes, which were adorable, and I dropped down into the comments and just to see what people were saying. And sure enough, within one or two comments, people were talking about Trump. <laughs> I don't know what Trump has to do with Great Danes. I don't know what uh, Hillary has to do with Great Danes, but people were arguing about these divisive issues in a Great Dane video post. And then I went and I checked his meme. It was, again, very innocuous. It might have been something with NASA. Oh, God forbid. Then you got the flat earthers out and the people who are debunking the flat. And it was crazy. And I went into the comments and people are nuts, man, taking such a benign and really lovely optimistic post 
and turning it into a shisa show. A shit show. It's a shit show. And more and more, I think you would agree, we're seeing in these various Facebook groups, Facebook is just one arm of this. You've got YouTube comments. Those are the cesspool. Let me tell you, from first-hand experience, YouTube is a cesspool. You've got Instagram. You've got Snapchat. You've got all these various ways that people connect. And more and more and more of us are connecting this way now. A lot of the people here in the lab are middle-aged, like I am. Okay, I'm old. <laughs> but the generations coming up behind me, they are plugged into this system. And I'm noticing this denseness around everything, around people. Like, I'm here in Houston in this town that I'm not familiar with. And I'm a very nice person. I smile at people. And, I, and if, I'm not like an obnoxious talker. Like, I'm not going to start talking to everybody in the line. But I'll say hello and I'll ask about their day. I'm noticing, though, that people aren't into it. Some people won't even look me in my eye. And they'll just look me up and down. Maybe they have a point. My hair was crazy. It was crazy and stuff. But they're not kind, you know, and I can get in my feelings about that. But then I notice in my own self, sometimes having these weird reactions, like somebody's looking at me a little strangely. They're looking me up and down, and I'm like, oh, you want to go? Like, I get crazy, like this weird, triggered reaction. Like, we're not kind to each other. And I think what we're seeing in the physical reality, like out in the Starbucks, out in the Red Robins of it all, we're seeing physical human interactions that represent what's going down online. And see, what's going down online, that's not reality. That's systemic programming. And this is not a conspiracy theory. This is the founders of Facebook telling you we are social engineering it all. We are programming everybody. You are in this virtual validation loop where when somebody likes your stuff, you feel better about you and yourself and your life. And when somebody downvotes you on Reddit, you feel bad. And we are in this weird virtual reality where we are seeking validation and we are seeking to belong. And this is what I want to talk about because as lightworkers, we are carrying the torch. Let me start with the good news, which is, and the light shined into the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. The darkness didn't even know what to do with all that light because it didn't recognize it. And where the light shines, darkness cannot exist. Light permeates every aspect of the space, and it drives out the darkness. Yet, the problem is, we as light workers are getting caught up, aren't we? I am, and I'm isolated. We are getting caught up in the programming. There's a parable of two kings. One has one eye and sight from one eye, therefore half vision. And another king has two eyes, and he has the benefit of full vision. And the two-eyed king notices, though, that everyone seems to follow the one-eyed king. The one-eyed king speaks well, is an orator has a lot of flair, whereas the two-eyed king does not, and therefore everybody follows after the one-eyed king, but he's half-sighted. He doesn't see the whole picture. The two-eyed king does. And what does this do to the two-eyed king? It makes him insecure. He says to himself, what the hell is going on? Why is everybody following this half-sighted, one-eyed king? I can see clearly I know the truth. Nobody's following me. You and I are the two-eyed king. We're fully sighted. We know there's more to this system. There's more to this world. There's more to this rhetoric. Yet, we also see that everyone seems to be following that one-eyed king, that half-sighted, barely knows what's going on leader. And in our case, that's social media. That's society or what the system would show us society is. And instead of becoming empowered by this and saying, well, let me have a louder voice, let me have a better message, the two-eyed kings become insecure. And we feel like, what the hell is wrong with me? Like, this world is crazy. I don't belong here. I'm an outlier. I don't have anything that I can say that's going to impact these people. They're gone. They're going in a different direction. And so we become disempowered if we believe the one-eyed king. 
Our challenge is not to believe the one-eyed king. The challenge is to believe that which we know is true and to realize there are people out there who are not even spiritual, no spiritual compass whatsoever, who see it plainly, two eyes, full-sighted. It's the subconscious that animates and materializes that which we experience in this reality. It's what we're taking in. It's the programming, it's the ideologies, it's the identity politics, it is the partisanship, it is the argumentation, it is the real housewives of Atlanta, all this bullshit that we take into ourselves unknowingly. We're just tired, we're just home from work, we want to have a glass of wine. But we're allowing all of this to seep into the subconscious. That's why we're seeing all of this happen in our world. That's why there's a denseness, a stickiness, an ickiness to the world right now because too many unconscious people, including light workers, spiritual people, are allowing themselves to be programmed, programmed by the hackers. This guy who is a former Facebook founder, well, he's the founder and he's not with Facebook anymore, he said, this is what a hacker would do. They'd hack into the mainframe and they'd manipulate it to get the results that I want, that, that they want. The system is not here to reconcile the division. The system is here to accentuate the division. Why? Because the division is the distraction, you see. When we are caught up with what football player is taking a knee, when we're caught up with all of these gender and race and money politics, when we're caught up in vaccines, and so on and so forth, we're really not paying attention to what's really happening on the planet and what those in power are actually doing. Now, here's where I want to stop because I sound a little crazy. I might be sounding a little David Icke. I might be sounding a little fear matrix. And what the fear matrix is, is this idea that we are living in the matrix and that our energy and our money is being used to fund what some might call the Illuminati or the Cabal or the 1% or the reptilians. There are people out there that believe that. I tend to think that some of that's possible. And I definitely think, well, it's you can see and it's provable that most of the wealth goes to a select few families and the rest of us are here trying to just scavenge our life. Um, that's true. But I tend to think it's it's not as bad as all that. And I, I also think if it is that bad, if we've got reptilian overlords, like I don't care because that's darkness, that's lower vibration, and the only thing that would ever defeat anything like that anyway would be love and it would be light. And so I, my point of interest is always with the love and always with the light and always with being that because that's what dismantles any organization or system that may exist and that's where we are I believe we are we are at the point where we are going to start seeing some of these systems begin to dismantle and to topple we're already seeing it in Hollyweird we're already seeing this with with um, power roles especially male female and it's not always male female though it's it's the power position and how the power position tends to abuse that which doesn't have the power and typically that's women or those who are disadvantaged and how they've been taken in that so we're seeing some of that begin to reorganize and begin to dismantle and good it's time for that to happen we're also seeing a drastic overreaction with people sort of bandwagoning on getting real mad getting real upset posting a lot about it about Harvey Weinstein and everybody in an energy that is not helpful Martin Luther King said Hate cannot heal hate. It cannot cure hate. It cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And yet too many of us are participating in the divisiveness. We're getting caught up in the sides of it all. Trump, Hillary, Bernie, white, black, Asian, socioeconomic, money, no money, and so on. And we're getting all caught up in the system. We have to understand that we ex our power exists outside of the system. Our power as divine beings has nothing to do with systems. We came here not to change the game. We came here to run the game, and it's in our power to do that. 
Human consciousness is connected. I am connected to you, whether you're black, whether you're Asian, whether you're Native American, it doesn't matter. And you are connected to me. Whether you want to be or not, we are connected. The only thing that can dismantle the system is us. And the only way we can dismantle this system is by unplugging from it. And of course, I'm of two minds here because I'm talking to you on Facebook. <laughs> Our group exists on Facebook. We don't have the infrastructure at this time to exist anywhere else that you know, would be safe or would be as advanced technologically as Facebook. And so render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. But do you spend all day on do you, It's the first thing you do when you wake up is pick up your phone and read what's going, going down in, in, in the world. Check in with your friends. Check in with your email. What's the last thing you do before you go to bed? What are your disciplines about? How plugged into the system truly are you? And it's not just the internet. It's the television. Again, the real housewives, the reality shows. It's not reality, people. People don't conduct themselves like that in actual reality. Well, we never used to. But now we see it on television and we think, oh, it's okay. Well, Kenya on Real Housewives of Atlanta does it, so I can just flip a table or throw a chair at somebody. This is normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. We have to be the way showers. I want to read you something that I think is powerful. But the man wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and so who's my neighbor then? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw this man, he passed by on the other side. Mm -mm, don't want to look at that. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and he saw him, and he took pity on him. He went to him. He bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, and he said, Look after this man. He also said, When I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense. And Christ asked, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go do likewise. And what some people don't know is that Samaritans were second-class citizens in Jesus' day. They were those that were shunned. We didn't look on them. We didn't pay attention to them. They didn't have a voice in society, unlike the priests, unlike the Levites. Samaritans were at the bottom of the caste system. And yet it was a Samaritan who stopped and had mercy and took care of his brother. And Christ is saying, that's what you do to inherit the kingdom. It's not just what you do to live a good life or to be a good person. That's what you do if you want to inherit eternal life. Now, I think that makes a lot of sense to you. I think that in the end, only kindness matters, only love matters, only light matters, and how much of that you were able to spread during the course of your very finite and short life. It is not about all the arguments that you can win on Facebook or on any other social media platform. It is not about being on the right side of the fence or an issue and contributing to the divisiveness of that issue in anger and righteous indignation. It is not about that. It's about being the Samaritan, the one person on the road who stopped and was good and lent their mercy. That's who we're called to be. Mother Teresa also said, I was once asked why I don't participate in anti-war demonstrations. I said, I will never do that, but as soon as you have a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. As soon as you have a pro-peace rally and not an anti-war demonstration or rally, I'll be there. I'm not going to focus, she's saying, on negative. I'm not going to focus on the fight or the good fight. There is no good fight. Feel the energy of that. I'm always telling people, check your energy. How's that making you feel being so mad at Donald Trump? 
How's that making you feel being so mad at women or men or black people or white people or transgender people or gay people? How's that working for you? How's that lending itself to the quality of your life? Do you think anybody cares that you're right on the internet? Nobody cares that you're right. Nobody's listening. They're just fighting. And so it's behold, you're beholden. You have to be the one to change it. We have to be the one to change it. And I just want to call out this false doctrine of activism that seems to plague light workers. Lots of light workers feel like we have to be activists for something. We've got to fight the power. We've got to fight against something as opposed to holding a higher vibration within themselves of joy, mercy, love, and kindness, and then just allowing that to transmit to the planet. Don't you know that's far more powerful than fighting something? I used to ask myself, which is more powerful? Which is more meaningful? Which one contributes more? The yogi who sits on top of a mountain and meditates all day, high vibration, sending out the radio signal of bliss, or Mother Teresa, down in the trenches, feeding the children, helping the poor. Which one, at the end of the day, final tally, open the books, which one scores higher? I used to think, well, it's obviously Mother Teresa. She's working. She's doing. She's out there. She's contributing. I never recognized the sheer power of one person to hold a high vibration, how that actually changes things. It changes your life. It allows you to reach a higher frequency, and as soon as you do that, you're sending a different kind of signal, and that's the signal that's going to bring in new conditions and experiences that match it. Now, you're intelligently designing your life. You're controlling it from a higher vantage point awesome, but that signal also expresses out from you into the world. It touches the people that are sitting next to you in the coffee shop or in the pew at church. They feel your love. They feel your joy and your high vibration. It changes them. It makes them happier. I was listening to Wayne Dyer once. I went to one of his um, workshops and he was talking about how he practices this every single day. He'll get into his car, and he'll put on the most high vibration music that he can listen to, that he loves, and he'll sing along, and he'll tone along, and then he'll start driving. And because he's in such a high vibration, high frequency state, traffic starts to clear. He catches all the greens. He looks over, and the people are happy in the car next to him. They're laughing. His vibration changes the landscape of his experience, not just for him, but all of traffic, all of people, all of humanity. That's who we are. That's how powerful we are. And so I think as humans, not just lightworkers, we have a sickness happening right now, and it's pervasive. And I think in 20 years, this whole situation is going to be far different than even I can fathom because that's the nature of technology. It, it it increases and expands exponentially, and I can't even fathom what it's going to be in 20 or 100 years. I don't know. Nobody knows. What I do know, though, is that we are the only ones that can usher in this new age, this dawning of the age of Aquarius. We are the only ones that can change the tone, change the life. And even if someone's not going to smile at me because I'm me, Maybe I look a certain way, I'm a certain color, maybe I'm dressed funny. Even if they won't smile at me, I'm going to smile at them. And I'm going to bless them. And I'm going to be a blessing in this life. I'm not going to go out bitter, depressed, angry, not contributing anything, making it worse, fighting, divisive. I'm going to do something with my life. I have access to the light by virtue of having a spirit. And nobody can take that away from me. Nobody can sever the connection of the spirit, which is always connected to the source. That which is all that is. I'm always connected to that. And I can either choose to be aligned to that and heal this world, or I can choose to get into the matrix and into the system and be a part of the problem that sorely needs healing. So how many of you out there want to heal it with me. I want to heal it. I mean, this isn't, this isn't new stuff. Gandhi said 
be the change you seek to see in the world. Like do, you do that, be that. Don't wait for Crystal Ann Compton to be excellent at her light. You be excellent at your light. Don't wait for Trisha Carr to figure out all the knowledge and then give it to you. No, you go out and you get that knowledge. Be the change you seek in the world. That's just the truth of it all. We are more powerful than we think. I want to end by talking a little bit again about the 100th monkey effect because this demonstrates how if just a few of us do this, if just a few of us unplug from the mainframe, from the system, and start pivoting and pointing our interest towards that which is edifying and good and love, we can change it all, all of it. There was a scientific study that took place, I want to say in the 70s, that studied a, a group, is it a troop? I always get this wrong, a troop of monkeys in Okinawa. Um, on the islands of Okinawa. And the scientists began to observe some interesting behavior. In particular, they were focusing on the monkeys because they had their own systems and their own processes to process food or, or their own systems of rearing their children and so on and so forth. They had all these intricate systems, and this was fascinating to the scientists. What they noticed, though, as they observed their systems was an interesting effect that we now refer to as the 100th monkey effect. An innovation takes place. Somebody does something different than everybody else is doing it. So they noticed one monkey started processing their food differently than all the other monkeys did. In particular, this was sweet potatoes. And this monkey would take the sweet potatoes into the ocean and it would wash the sweet potato in a certain way, whereas all the other monkeys maybe just dug up those potatoes and started eating them. I don't know. But this one monkey did it differently. And the scientists noticed that the other monkeys in this troop or in this group observed the monkey doing it differently. And they started to do it too. One after one, 10, 20, 30 monkeys started using this innovation because this was an advanced innovation. This was better for the food. It was better for the monkey. And then the scientists noticed that on or around the 100th monkey who followed the innovation, in other words, the 100th monkey who started also washing his or her sweet potato in the ocean, something interesting happened. The monkeys who existed on islands that were not where the monkeys were that they were observing, those monkeys all of a sudden had the same access to that innovation. The monkeys on outer islands began also washing their sweet potatoes. They hadn't observed the one monkey who came up with this innovation. They hadn't observed the 30 monkeys, the 50 monkeys that were all conducting or doing this innovation. Instead, they seem to just have the knowledge all of a sudden, hey, let's all wash our potatoes. What this implies is that a transmission takes place once enough of us start participating in the innovation. And this transmission is non-local. It doesn't exist inside my brain or my mouth where I have to transmit it to you through speech or showing you. It is non-local. It's energetic. It's transmitted, it's transmitted on a different level. Now take it from the monkey and bring it to us. Bring it to human consciousness. Bring it to those of us who are hip to the jive. I'm not plugging into the system. I'm not contributing to anger, partisanship, and divisiveness. I'm pivoting. I'm hanging out in the light. I'm hanging out in the love. What happens when 100 of us manage to do that? This is an advancement. It is. It's a spiritual technology of high vibration. When 100 of us begin to do this, it's on or about, okay? But when a group of us begin to do this collectively, it transmits to the rest of humanity. Again, non-local. It's not just about outer islands and monkeys. It's about crystals in Texas, and you're in the Czech Republic. It's still transmitting. It's non-local. We're connected energetically because we're the divine beings. We're part of a collective that is higher than this dimensional reality. This transmission is received by the person in the Czech Republic, and now this person has access to this technology. Now this person sees maybe a moment of clarity. Wow, I can pivot. I can unplug. I can hang out in the light and in the love, and I can change my vibration. I can change my frequency. Now does that mean this particular monkey in the Czech Republic starts washing her sweet potato? 
Not necessarily, but she has access to it. And the more of us that participate in the spiritual innovation, this is where we're headed. That's what shift is. Shift is huge spiritual innovation. It's, it's transition into a new frequency, into a new reality. The more of us that participate with this and pivot and hang out in the love, the more it is made available to the rest of humanity, to the world, to Gaia. Gaia that needs it the most. She receives from our consciousness. That's why we have to be accountable. It's not just us. If we do this together, we have, well, the Bible says, doesn't it? Where two or more are gathered, there he is, right in the midst of them. Now, listen, I'm not a, I'm not a fundamentalist Christian. I'm not at all. I, I, I am an esoteric kind of a Christian, but I'm all over the map. I don't advocate for any organized religion. But there are eternal words in every sacred text where two or more little monkeys are gathered. There God is in the midst of them. Something's happening there. There's an activation that takes place. And if we do this with intention and conscious of our contribution or our contamination, this is how we shift. This is how we truly change the world. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? I hope so. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.